Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. In our last video, we saw Jordan Rad and I with our electrician Joel and his son Malachi run all the rough wiring for the garage. And we got a ton of work done, but to tell you the truth, Joel and his family have to leave for Indianapolis in about four hours, so we got a ton of work to do. Let's get started. But I think I just saw somebody pull up to the job site. Let's go see who it is. All right, guys, before we get started with today's video, we want to introduce to you a special guest on our channel, Mr. William Agundez. Because we're new to Texas and are really unfamiliar with the codes here, and this is such a complicated project electrically, he's given us a lot of guidance. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? My name is William Agundez. I'm owner of EPX Energy. We service the Dallas market, San Antonio, Austin, and Houston. So I'm looking at this project. I come in, and I'm looking at all the wiring, doing the rough, and one thing stands out. You're looking at these uh, Romex wires here, this SCR cable, and look at how they're just in line. I mean, nobody's gonna see it, right? So when I walk in and I see that, that lets me know these installers are taking pride in their work. And if they take pride in their work, they're gonna do phenomenal uh, work and a phenomenal job. The amount of wiring in this little garage has got me kind of freaked out, honestly, because we got to build a house next door and it's gonna have like three or four times the amount of wire, right? Yeah, this place is right. nuts. Oh yeah. oh yeah. So thanks so much for making the trip. Thoroughly enjoyed meeting you. And uh, we're gonna see you again soon, right? You're yes, sir. Right, cool. It was a pleasure. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, right. thank you very much. Thanks, yes, sir. All right, guys, that was awesome to meet William. Super appreciate him coming by. Now, what are we doing today? Check out these big cables right here. This one right here, I gotta look, is feeding the panel in the garage that's under the stairs. This one is our future for the house build that terminates under the bridge. We'll tie it into the main house later. But these don't do much good just sitting here in the wall. We need power going to them from our utility company. So they're actually gonna go through this wall on the other side is where our meter is gonna be, where our local utility company, Entergy, is gonna tie into the meter and supply the stud pack dream house with electricity. And speaking of the meter, we have our meter cabinet right here on our zip table. And these two lugs right here is where the local utility is gonna bring their two lines, right, Joel? And then this is our meter socket. And what are you working on right there? Well, it's all laid out except this last hole. It's time to drill and then we'll be ready to mount. Cool. Nice. Now we're not mounting this thing directly to the zip, right? You've innovated a better solution. Right, because imagine this zip behind here was our wall and we had to put our siding in. How are we ever gonna get a piece of siding between here, behind this pipe? I don't wanna mess with that at all. It's not gonna happen. So we did a little stud pack special out here. I bought a four by eight sheet of PVC that's one inch thick. And this was a little pricey, but I hope you uh, kind of forgive me for that. How much? Uh, it was $500. Uh, it was $500. Dang. Well, like I said, four by eight sheet. I already cut this piece and check it out. I even put a little chamfer on it. I'm going for the NEMA best meter installation of the year award for that. But this is going to mount on the outside. Yes. All our equipment is going to mount on this. And then we can bring our lap siding right up to the edge for a nice the, clean yes. look. So let's grab so our tools and mount that PVC. And uh, uh, are you ready, Buster? Within 18 inches roof, roof. along the length right, of he's the ready. wire. Stud. There it is. Okay. So Rad's putting a little dab of Lexo on the hole so when the screw goes in, it's gonna seal the back of the panel. A big shout out again to Sashko for providing all the Lexo for this project. We really appreciate it. You good? Good. Cool. There's your meter can, bud. Get ready to start paying for some power. Not with solar. That's true. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here on the back side of that zip wall where we installed our meter can. And as you can see, the screws are sticking out. So all we're gonna do to give us some more holding power, we've got these blocks. I'm gonna zip that one out. I'm gonna put the block there, put the screw back and connect the block to our studs to be really strong. We just do it four times. That way our meter can will never go anywhere. Nice. I'm really excited. I've never done this before, so we're going to just see how it goes. <laughs> we're gluing up the pipe. PVC has tremendous expansion characteristics. I like to put writing back so that 
The inspector can't see it. The inspector can't see it. That is Schedule 80 PVC, <laughs> yeah. but it's just a little cleaner look. So it's glued up, ready to mount the cabinet, and we don't have to worry about the expansion characteristics in this case because it's such a short length. That comes into play at about 20 feet. So Schedule 80 is a thicker wall and it's required above ground just because it is stronger, is that right? Right, anytime yeah. you're subject to physical damage, that Schedule 80 is typically, in most jurisdictions, a code requirement. Yeah, so even this three inch coming up out of the ground is gonna be Schedule 80. Exactly, and, and all the underground is Schedule 40. Cool. Here goes cabinet. I got a level on the pipe. Slide it all the way on to make sure we get a full seat. There goes my level. Thanks, Rad. With the quality of the screw that's being used, the sealant, the PVC backer, and the life expectancy of this equipment, this is legitimately a 50-year installation that will not need to be touched. I wow. see track homes built all the time that are using drywall screws to secure their electrical equipment. Will a drywall screw last 50 years in an exterior environment? No. So you're gonna come back in 50 years is what you're saying? This will still be here in 50 years and there will be no need to come back ah. for 50 years. All right, our next one is the middle guy. Yeah. This is the hole for the SCR cable. So we did this kind of Mickey Mouse eared hole for the connector that Joel put in there. Yep, beautiful fit. Yep, so it'll fit flush with the back of the cabinet. Now this hole is for that cable and we'll seal all around it. We're making fantastic progress this afternoon. The temperature is beautiful, just barely half a degree sub 100. We've got our feeders pulled into the back of these cabinets and I'm starting to make terminations here. Our goal before I tail it back to Indianapolis is to have these cabinets finalized with the grounding system in. So it's a bit of a tall order, back to work. All right, so I'm going to lay out each conductor one at a time, the proper length, cut, strip, brush, no locks, insert, torque, done. A total of like 24 terminations. That we have to do right now? Right now. Wow. Anti-oxidation compound to keep that aluminum in good shape long term. That one's ready. So we left additional space here for the two pole 60 amp solar disconnect that's required by the utilities and code. Paul's gone to pick up the materials and he's back. Tell me they had it. They had it. They had it. We're going to put it in today. Look, yes. The FedEx truck is here and I think they have more stuff for the house. What? Let's see what Jacoby's got for they, us. They show up every day. Every day. <laughs> What's up Jacoby? What's up brother? How you doing today? Yeah, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. You getting a long weekend? Ooh. Yes, sir. Nice. Time. I need it. I need that break. I got it. It's a little heavy. <laughs> Later, man. Yeah, I need your help. <laughs> Before I actually land these conductors, I'm going to wait on Paul to come back from the supply house. We're waiting on two inch bushings that we're going to put here to prevent the cable from bearing down on that metal edge. Houses do vibrate, buildings move, there's no question about it. And that metal edge, although it's dull, could work its way through the jacket of the cable and cause a massive direct short. I've seen it, believe me. This is so important to get the connections right in the panel. This is the main neutral that's gonna feed half the house. Absolutely vital. So we're gonna torque this down with care. Couple of steps. One, anti-oxidation compound to improve electrical conductivity, prevent corrosion. Two, as we tighten it down, we're gonna crank it into place and then we're actually gonna back it off and loosen it up because this is a stranded conductor. Stranded conductors have a lot of room for those strands to settle and seat and they don't get it right the first time. They never ever on these big conductors get it right the first time. So loosening that up and then tightening it down. You'll notice that you typically get an additional quarter or half turn because that's all in the, the strands settling 
into the mechanical lug. Super important. All right, guys, we got all of our four aught run, and that wasn't too bad. You said this was gonna be a dog fight. It is a dog fight, but not when you've got the whole stud pack crew on it. <laughs> That's true. It's a lot easier that way. We had a lot of help. A lot of help. And speaking of easier, if you're a DIYer doing a project on your own and you wanna jump on a virtual call with me, check the description. There's a link and you can schedule that. So if I'm a DIYer hanging out a ceiling fan and I need help, I can call you and talk to you? You can call. Where were you like 30 years ago? Yeah, <laughs> now you've got it all figured out. You don't need any help. <laughs> but yeah, I do, sometimes. Yeah. All right, guys. Joel spent his final hours on their last day here wiring all this together, and it is a work of art. Now let's take you through it. Power from our local utility is gonna come in here. They're gonna land their neutral there. Line one, line two. That's right. Come through our meter, line one and line two. Then we split. This is feeding the panel for the garage. This side's feeding the panel for the house, or vice versa, we're not sure, are we? We made a decision there, and I think we're, this one's going to the house. That's right. And we've left additional outdoor circuits for yeah. future pool so and other cool. amenities. That's cool. So we can put breakers here, come out the bottom, feed backyard landscape lighting, pool, whatever Jordan needs. That's really gonna be convenient. That way we don't have to go through the house, through the holes in the walls, things like that. So it looks complicated, but it's really not once you break it down. It's just big wire feeding a big house. That's it, 320 amp service often called 400 amp, two exterior emergency disconnects as required by code. And we're ready to start building the dream home, what, this afternoon? We're ready. Wow. And then we made room between these two because this has to get replaced by a transfer switch for the backup generator, right? That's right. To feed the garage. We even planned ahead. We can come out with the conduit for the transfer switch over here, down, and back to the generator in the backyard. That's right. Thinking ahead, trying to make everything work, keep it clean, nice. Looks great. All right, gang, we've been working hard for four days with Joel from Electric Pro Academy, getting this place rough wired. We almost got it all done and it looks fantastic. Why do I say almost what is left? We got our panel to put in, but it kind of worked out great because wait until you see what we got planned for here and the house, it's gonna blow your mind. We also have the ground to do outside, our low voltage wiring, which we can handle, and we gotta make up all our boxes, which is pretty easy too. So look, dude, I cannot thank you enough for coming down here, bringing your whole family all the way from Indianapolis, knocking this out. Awesome. This has been a blast. The Stud Pack crew is completely legit, down to earth, a joy to work with. You guys are gonna do a fantastic job. I can't wait to follow the rest of the build. So uh, will you come back and help us again? That's yeah, the yeah. Question. Uh, this is just the rough end. You gotta face the finish out, right? And then yeah. you've got the house. So I think we're on deck for another one. I'm in. Well, I know y'all are ready to hit the road. You're trying to make a big stop tonight. So once again, thanks so much. Yeah. Y'all have a safe trip. Be safe and we'll see you on your next trip, maybe in Vegas. Thanks, Paul. Right. Really appreciate it. See cool. you guys. Get him. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <look. laughs> nice. Thanks. All right, gang, that was super awesome having Joel here helping us out with the electric on our project. Now, that was many, many weeks ago, to be honest, and it is present day here at the Stud Pack Project. And we're actually going to continue on now with the work that Joel left us to do, specifically running our underground utilities. We're switching from the overhead to underground right here, three inch conduit three feet in the ground, all the way out to a future pole that the energy company is gonna install for us. We actually waited to do it because we need an excavator for that. This is gonna be some tough digging. And we actually have a few other projects we wanna do with the excavator, mainly get some drainage going on around this property so we don't have water sitting behind Jordan all the time. So that's right, Mud Pack is back. Check it out, we got a little mini X and we're gonna start digging right now. Alright guys, the Mini X is in the backyard finally. So what are we going to do? Remember early on when we dug the foundation for this building behind me and there was a huge pile of dirt right here, Mount Stud Pack? It's long gone, but the dirt here is still too high. Get a lot of comments about that. So what we're going to do with the Mini X is basically make a moat right here. So all the water behind me that comes down from the neighborhood behind me can flow out of here instead of collecting under Jordan's house and creating a mosquito breeding ground. 
The other thing we want to do is fill in a lot of the low spots. When Jordan first bought the property, we loaded my tools over here and drove up with my truck. It got stuck. Those ruts are still there and it plays havoc with me and Jordan when we're cutting the grass. So we're simply going to set the blade at a comfortable height and try to spread out this dirt and make the backyard nice and smooth so we cut the grass easy. Let's fire that thing up and start moving some dirt. All right, that is working really well. As you can see, we've already made great progress. We've, we've moved a bunch of dirt and we've removed a bunch of the stakes from the concrete for them. Check it out over there. It's actually like pulling teeth, wouldn't you say, Jordan? So satisfying. It is, but we got a couple of teeth over here that are impacted. They are encased in concrete. So I'm gonna to try to chip it out so we can remove the wooden stake. We don't want the termites feasting on the stakes and getting into our building. So lesson learned, probably pull the stakes day of the pour, yep. day after the pour, but it is what it is, live and learn. So I'm gonna fire this guy up and see if I can't get those out of there. All right, the stake is moving, but I did get the rotor hammer stuck. So Jordan was, was tired of seeing me struggle getting it out. So he's gonna bring the bucket over here, free up the tool and get the stake out. Let's see how good he is. All right. Let's get your tool out. With the machine, look at you. There's your tool. Look at you, nice. <laughs> All right, let me get in there and see if I can move it. became personal. <laughs> we were going to leave it, but I'm like, it was so close. Let's get it out. And you can see what kind of quarters we're working in. There's the sewer right there. Well, look how easy it moves. What? All right, maybe if I can just stab it with the shovel. Can I pull it up? Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. you can get that with your hands now. <laughs> nice. <sighs> I really didn't want to leave that in. That would have bugged me. Victorious. Wow. Nice, dude. All right, only uh, the rest of the building. Yeah, not too many. <laughs> All right, gang, we got that stake out. We backfilled it and check this out. See this little lip right here? It's a concrete lip. That's from the bottom of the two by six form. Concrete went under it. That's what we're after. That's what we want our grade to be. Yep. So when this is all clean, we can get in here with some mats and we can liquid flash this joint. That's really the last step of our air sealing detail. And it should be done really early on, but. Yeah, we just had all this in our way. Yeah. Three guys, one house, what are you gonna do? <laughs> all right, this stake, and then I think we can work around the back, bud. Yeah, I can't wait to see the whole foundation look like that. We've never seen it like that. On, so, on everybody else's videos, we see it like that, but we haven't seen that here, so I'm excited. It's gonna happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on this one, we got a chain around it. I think you can pull it out, Jordan, let's give it a shot. Hey, I thought we were there. Here we go. You got it. Come on. Yeah. Oh, watch out. Come on. Let's go, dude. Good job. Oh, my gosh. Right, that's this corner done, right? Yep. All right, let's keep working. All right, guys, it's the next day, and this is what one day on the Mini X looks like. Mud Pack is back. But even though it looks terrible, we did a lot of work. We got all the stakes out on the front of the building, this side and the back, and most of them on the other side. And I'm not talking about little bitty stakes either. This is typical of what we were pulling out of the ground. And having these things in the ground was really bugging us. Jordan was worried about termites. We were always chipping on the top, and we feel so good that these things are out of the ground. Now there are three stakes left on the far side, on the picket fence side. We can't get the mini X in there, so we're gonna have to hand dig it. Rad's on his way, we're gonna put him on it. Easy. Easy. All right guys, the dirt work in the back is looking a lot better. Really happy with it, it's looking great. We're getting a lot of comments about the grade on this building. If you go back and look at our slab video, you know that we poured this thing eight, nine inches higher than the street. Our driveway slopes up to the slab when all of our neighbors' driveways slope away from the street. So I'm standing on the slab, obviously. I'm gonna step down onto the porch, two inches lower, and it's sloping this way, and come over here, and you can see what kind of work we did right here with shovels and rakes. And we got the grade sloped from that little lip we were talking about earlier right here, sloped to the bottom of the pickets on the fence. 
It actually could be a little lower where I'm standing right here. But that's a really nice grade. It's gonna get the water away from our building into our drainage right here, really great. Now, if we'd have made this any higher, this slope is gonna be a lot steeper. We didn't want that steep of a slope. It's gonna be hard to walk on. Uh, a lot of disadvantages to that. And we have so a we, five foot setback if it's higher. Yeah, we got then a five foot setback. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So we love that, love the way this works. And while we're here, we can't get the mini X in here. So all this is gonna be hand digging, but it's not too bad. All right, let's head it back into the garage, Jordan. And what we're gonna do, just for our own satisfaction and yours, we set the laser up, we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna to go to the street, and we're gonna show you how much higher the slab is in the street, and then we're gonna take it back to the far right corner where the wood fence meets the white picket fence. That's the low point on the property. All the water's going that way, and then heads right and goes out to the street. So let's set the laser up and shoot some grades. All right, there's our rotating laser and we have the sensor lined up on our stick. We're even with the laser and we're at four foot seven to the top of the bracket right here. Let's walk out to the street, see what the difference is. All right, out here on the sidewalk and let's raise this up. Boom. The difference between the bottom and the stick and the sidewalk is how much higher the slab is than the sidewalk. Let me put it on there. I'm gonna raise the receiver and let's see exactly what it was. Remember we were at four foot seven. I'm at five foot, five inches, six inches seven inches getting close eight inches a little higher jordan there we go eight and a half inches higher we really like that i, I think like that's great yeah it's, it's awesome it doesn't it's not steep but it's a driveway right. that's going to drain and get the water off the property yeah i didn't really want like a lemony snicket situation where your house was like super raised up i mean that's crazy well in the driveway that we had when i was a kid it held water all the time and we hated washing cars on it because it always held water when you wash your stang that water's out of here. Facts. Let's head to the back corner and shoot that because we've actually never done that, right? Never. All right, we're in the back corner and if you can see where Jordan is, there's kind of a natural gully right here where all that water has been pouring through. So this is really the lowest spot. So man, we are a lot lower. We were at four, seven. Let's go five, seven. Not there yet. Oh, wow. Close. Well over Holy. a foot. Yeah, it's there, you go. there we go. I'm gonna lock it in. Five, seven. One, two, three, four. 16 inches lower right here yeah. than the top of the slab. Man, when we get this thing graded, it's gonna be great. You're not gonna have any water sitting in the backyard. Yeah, so we hope this puts to bed all the uh, all the graders and the slab is too low sayers, because definitely not too low. It's not too low. We just got a ton of dirt out here that we have to remove, right? <laughs> yeah, well, remember all this dirt is the mound from Mount Stud Pack. We got it pushed around, not removed. So this yard is so much higher. Yeah, and the plan is when Jordan moves upstairs, we're gonna tear down the house, use it for some firefighter training, whatever. But once the house is gone, get some heavy earth moving equipment back here, totally grade the backyard. And then when they work their way out, they can dig the foundation for the house. It's yep. gonna be great, can't wait. All right guys, now it's time to use the excavator for what we really got it for. We started this video off over at the electrical meter talking about how we need to run the underground service. Jordan's gonna switch from overhead electrical to underground. The utility company told us we had to bury a three inch conduit three feet deep. And I think that's another reason, Jordan, right? We wanted to get the grade established because we have to be three feet below grade. And our grade is basically gonna be this little lip. So we're gonna dig a trench three feet deep from here all the way to the white picket fence and install our three inch conduit here with a nice long bend radius 90 all the way to the street. Jordan, you want to go to the street and tell them the plan or you just want to start digging? I think we should start digging. We only have that thing for another couple hours, so we should get to work. We can always talk about the plan. Yeah, we can always do that. All right, I'm going to move the trailer because it's in the way. Why don't you get the machine over here? Rad will be here in a few minutes. We'll get started. Great start on the trench. What our utility company is looking for, three foot deep to the top of the conduit. Just to show you, here's our long radius 90. I'm gonna put it in the hole. And we had to chip away some of this concrete because I wanted to come straight up in here. One of my pet peeves is when the pipe is angled because you're trying to miss the concrete, right? Or something else. Yeah. Everything else on the house is nice and straight, we think. So we wanted this to go straight down. So now it's just a matter of Jordan digging all the way to the street. We did call uh, 811. There is nothing around here. No sewer, no underground propane, which is a thing here. No natural gas, no electric, no electronics. So he is good to go. So while Jordan is working on the trench, Rad and I are gonna get back here. Here's those three stakes we were showing you. One, two, three. 
We're gonna hand dig those, check that item off the list, get all the stakes off the property. All right, bud, hop back on the machine, keep digging. Oh, what you, you know doing? I will, you know I will. One of the reasons I love working on the excavator is because Mother Nature takes you for these little surprise roller coaster rides. Watch this. Oh. Oh my. Let's keep that seatbelt on. All right, check it out. The trench is pretty much done. Now we're gonna glue up this pipe and throw it in there. And that's gonna give us a final length on the trench behind Jordan. And it's just a simple matter of gluing it up. We have three inch Schedule 40 PVC conduit. It comes with a bell end, so we don't need any couplings. I've got the cement right there. There's our 90. Let's glue these six pieces together and lower them in the trench. All right, guys, we have 50 feet of pipe glued together. We got our three inch 90 over there by Rad. We've got our ropes tied off to the picket fence. And now Rad and I just gonna lower it in the ground. Go ahead. I have to help that, you know it's going. Yeah, we'll untie from the fence, pull the rope out, and then we'll make up that end. We'll work together and we'll get it plumb this way and that way. You don't like it like that? <laughs> no, that would drive me insane. Here we go. All right, up. Good. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. Yep, I'm all the way in. I can reach inside. I can feel it. A little bit more to me, just a hair. Perfect. Yeah, we'll hold it there with dirt, and we'll put a conduit clamp here later. Beautiful, guys. Cool. I'll wipe this glue off. We'll go finish that other end. We'll put as long of a piece of conduit in there as we can. We'll tape the end so it stays clean, mark it so we know where the end is, and backfill. All right, guys, the three inch conduit is in the ground and we're not quite ready to backfill yet. There's a couple things we wanna do thinking ahead. We're gonna put about six inches of dirt on top of this and then we're gonna run one inch conduit empty to the pole for Jordan's fiber, his internet for this building when he finally moves in. Then we're gonna put another six inches in, put down some tape that says caution, electric line below. It's not really tape, it's more like ribbon. So if somebody's digging in the future, they hit that first, hopefully see it in a pile of dirt and know to stop digging with the machine. So let's backfill a little bit, run the conduit, backfill a little more, put in the ribbon, push all the dirt in, check this job off the list. fiber conduit. Future stud pack videos are gonna be uploaded through this conduit. That's fun. Oh, snap. Yeah. Bam. All right, we're gaining on it. Our last step is to put in this caution buried electric line below. It is a detectable tape. So I guess it's some kind of aluminum, Jordan, that's detectable with a metal detector? It's called a cable avoidance tool. Cable avoidance tool, got Probably it. Probably a metal detector. All right, so I'm gonna give this to Rad. I'm gonna tie this end to the three inch and then he can spool it off. 
Now let me talk about the depth. It is recommended to go six to 12 inches below grade. I think where I'm standing, I'm, at, I'm just a little less than that, but I like it because they're gonna hit this first, then they're gonna hit the one inch, and then the three inch is way down there, right? And we're not sure where our grade is gonna be, so we are a little deeper, but I'm cool with that. All right, bud, let me tie this off and then you can go. Well, you can go right now, I got it. All right, the ribbon is in. Brad's gonna fix it. That literally took like 10 seconds, right? Let's fire up the excavator, back fill that hole. All right, gang, and just like that, we did a ton of work today. We got 60 foot of trench done, backfilled. Jordan even finished on the excavator, graded everything. He's doing pro hold level work. Hold your applause, hold your applause. Machine. Don't go crazy, sign autographs later. <laughs> but that was a lot of work. We started about 10 this morning, dug that trench three and a half feet deep, 60 feet long, yep. got in the three inch, backfilled the one inch for the fiber, back build a little more, compact it along the way, then our detectable ribbon. Yes. So we don't dig it up again or somebody else. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is one of those steps where it's so cool because all of the power for the entire build, the entire property is gonna be through that conduit that we just ran. All the videos that we're uploading are gonna be through that fiber thing that we just ran. And I'm sighting down right there into that conduit that we ran. It's dead straight. Yep. I don't even care that it's gray. Off the building. It looks so good. Yeah, and let's go over here to the street. We want to show you one thing we did that's going to help us in the future because we stopped short of the new utility pole. Our electric company will not come in from this pole. They're going to set a new pole here, conduit, and go underground. So see that orange mark on the fence? That is the end of our three inch conduit and the end of our one inch conduit. Right. So it's going to come along here once the pole is set and we'll turn up with another 90. Yep. And that was that was like that, by the way. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so we, uh, we we dug all this with a machine and backfilled it because when it comes to put that pole in and, and finish the conduit, we got to hand dig it. That dirt is tough. So it's now, been... it's, now it's already been yeah. dug yeah. and it's going to be soft, easy digging. Yep. Well, we did a lot in two days, guys. That was awesome. Yeah, this driveway area is looking great. The yeah. backyard's looking great. Love the foundation, seeing the edge of it now. First time we've ever seen it like that. Yep. Beautiful. We can give that a little pressure wash. Mm -hmm. put our liquid flash on and mm -hmm. that's going to be 100% done. Yeah, love it. So this video is 100% done. Mm. So dig you a three foot trench for your like button and put some detectable tape over it Why in case not? you can't find it. Right. Then you know where it is, right? right? You can smash it for us. Don't forget, merch, bunkerbranding.com. That's right. Check us out over on Instagram, at studpackofficial. Please subscribe, bring the bell so you know when we post a new video. And uh, we'll see you right back here, right? On that's the next right. Studpack video. See you guys later. Let's go.